Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Episcopal Church of the Transfiguration on this Sunday, August 2nd. So delighted to welcome you here into our worshiping community at Transfiguration. Wherever you are, we are delighted to share in this act of praise with you. If you're visiting us, if you are not already a part of our community at Transfiguration, but perhaps are visiting us virtually for the first time even today, I want to invite you to reach out to Ann Schmidt, whose email address appears at the bottom of the screen, member of our staff who helps us stay connected with people uh, and learn more about them. If you email her, she'll follow up with you. We would love to learn more about you, greet you more personally, and tell you more about the mission and ministry of our church. Welcome to you. If you have small children in your life, we have a separate worshiping opportunity for them. Children ages four through grade four give or take, um, are invited to join us for Children's Chapel that happens every Sunday from 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning, facilitated by our wonderful Director of Children's Ministries, Cindy Hauser, and a team of volunteers. We're so um, uh, uh, grateful to be able to offer this to our families with children. And so if you have a small person in your family, perhaps someone who has struggled to sit through these worship services, uh, then Uh, certainly reach out to Cindy. She can connect you with that Children's Chapel offering every Sunday and allow them to worship God in an age-appropriate way too. Also, for those with children, and particularly for those with children rising into third grade this year, it is a tradition here at Transfiguration for us to present rising third graders with their first full copy of the Bible, a long-standing tradition here going back um, for many years. Um, We will continue that tradition this year in a very careful way. Cindy Hauser is working and arranging uh, to make those Bibles available for all those kiddos. If you have a rising third grader in your family, will you please email Cindy Hauser at her email address that appears um, at the bottom of the screen so that we can make sure to coordinate with you so that your child can be one that receives a Bible this year. We celebrated the Eucharist last week. It was marvelously joyful. We do so every month on the last Sunday of the month. And that means our next celebration will be Sunday, August 30th. Though we are just beginning this new month, it's not too early to begin registering. Registration helps us to prepare accordingly and to get ready for that joyous day where we send communion out to over 50 zip codes. You can um, register by using the link that appears at the bottom of the screen. Doing so early just helps us get ahead of the game uh, because of the significance of the logistical effort. Lastly, next Sunday, we will welcome as our guest preacher, the Right Reverend Wayne Smith, Bishop Um, uh, assisting bishop in the Diocese of Dallas, now retired bishop of Missouri, who continues to pastorally oversee us at Transfiguration. It's our Feast of Title next week. This coming week on August 6th is the Feast of the Transfiguration. So next Sunday, we will honor that feast in our life together, and Bishop Smith will be our preacher. Obviously, we would much rather be here, welcome him to do confirmations and reception and all of that joyful stuff. We can't do that yet, but we can look forward to hearing from him, hearing his wisdom and his words next week. So I hope you'll join with me in looking forward to that. He'll also be our guest teacher in our Sunday Markin class, our Sunday exploration of the Gospel of Mark. So join with me in anticipating next week's uh, joy. All right, our worship today will begin in just a moment with the chiming of the bells. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's reign, now and forever. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations you do not know, that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord our God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The Lord is gracious and from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people and my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. If you are not already seated, you may do so now. What parent hasn't experienced that moment when you get, oh, I don't know, 40 or 50 miles into your road trip and realize that you left the snack bag back on the kitchen counter at home. The kids, they may have eaten like a huge breakfast, but it doesn't matter. The minute they know that there's no food in the car, it's like blood is in the water. They will not be able to focus on anything else until you finally give up and pull in for that fast food that you swore you were not gonna do this time because you know you're gonna go crazy if you have to listen to them complain for just one more mile. (laughs) That's pretty much how today's gospel story starts out. A huge crowd of people have headed out for the day to get a glimpse of this Jesus character, but they appear to have left their snacks sitting on their kitchen counter back at home. The story, which by the way, is the only story other than the resurrection that is included in all four Gospels. The story doesn't include any of the you know, grumpy comments from the peanut gallery, but I think it's safe to assume that there was a fair amount of hanger in that mass of empty bellies. And without a nearby Whataburger, the disciples suggest the only thing that would seem to make sense in this moment. Send the crowds away, Jesus, so that they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. I don't think they meant any harm. I think the disciples were just being realistic. Night was falling. They were in the middle of nowhere. They barely had enough food to enjoy themselves. Just a a few loaves, a couple of dried fish. Time to take care of themselves for a change. And they thought everybody else around them should do the same. And besides, even if they wanted to help, what could they possibly do about so many hungry people in this moment? I know this feeling. And not only when I have no snacks for my kids in the car. I know it. I know it because it's how I feel when I'm faced with the big problems of total strangers. You know someone who's hungry or homeless or lost? Foster kids and refugees and prisoners? People who clearly need help No one's arguing that they don't need help. But I'm obviously not the right person to do it. I don't even have what they need. 
I don't have all of the resources and the skills and the time. I don't have all the food it would take. I'm not a millionaire. So I do, in these moments, what I think a lot of well-intentioned followers of Jesus do in these moments, including apparently the original 12 followers of Jesus. I ask Jesus to take care of it. Help them get what they need, Jesus. I can't help, but I sure hope you will. And in the meantime, please send them away. Amen. Mm. Ah, but that Jesus, you know, mm, he has a different idea. He always seems able to see the possibilities where we just see limitations. He doesn't really know anything about the space between a rock and a hard place, let alone how a person could feel stuck there. And besides, he knows exactly how to help the people we pray to him, asking him to help. They need not go away, he says. You give them something to eat. Now, I get all the reasons why in certain moments we think to ourselves, Jesus, I'm not the right one for this. I don't have the resources or the knowledge or the strength. This problem is just so big. I can't even bear to look at it. Jesus, won't you just send them away? I get it because Lord knows I've thought it. But I also know that we have been commanded to love one another like Jesus loves. It's hard to claim that you're loving like Jesus when most of what you do is make excuses for not helping the people who need that love the most. My friends, love is the most powerful force in the world. But in my experience, the force of love only really ever gets fully unleashed when we start getting closer to others. We can try to love from the safety of distance, but the power of love is only ever really truly unlocked when we get closer, when it becomes personal. That's why Jesus says they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Because Jesus knows that love is going to be the solution to this problem, just like it's the solution to every problem. But the power of love to feed an enormous hungry multitude depends upon the disciples' willingness to get closer to it. Only when they get closer to it, not sending it away, not averting their eyes, closer to it, could Jesus then take their meager offering and multiply it and use it to perform the miracle that they need. I am no expert in this sort of love. I'm trying to get better at it. One of my personal heroes in this, one of my mentors in expanding my capacity for this kind of love is a man named Brian Stevenson. Brian Stevenson is a lawyer, an author, and an activist. He's also one of my contemporary heroes. He founded the Equal Justice Initiative a couple of decades ago to advocate for people on death row. And since the 1990s, the Equal Justice Initiative has won reversals or release from prison for hundreds of wrongly convicted or unfairly sentenced prisoners, most of them men of color. He's also the founder of the Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama, which honors the thousands of lynching victims in our nation's history and is certainly among the most profound places I've ever visited in my lifetime. If you don't already know about Brian Stevenson, then I suggest you read Just Mercy. Or, if you're more of a movie watcher than a reader, then you can watch the brilliant film adaptation of the book that just came out earlier this year. 
Now, because of Brian Stevens' brilliance and integrity, he is routinely sought out for advice and inspiration. People want to know how he's done it, how he's made such a difference in the world already. And they go to him seeking guidance and hope for how they can make a, an impact on some of those huge and seemingly intractable problems of our world. Things like hunger or poverty or racism or mass incarceration. And what Brian Stevenson comes back to again and again is something that he calls the power in proximity. To make a difference, he says, we've got to find ways to get proximate to the poor and vulnerable. When we isolate ourselves and allow ourselves to be shielded from the vulnerable and disfavored, we sustain the problems. Too often we wait until we have all of the answers before we'll engage. But to make a difference, Stevenson says, we have to find ways to get closer to the marginalized, even if we don't have the answers. Brian Stevenson says that too many of us listen to that voice inside of our heads that tells us not to go to the bad part of town. Don't go where people are poor and hurting, that voice tells us. Don't go where there's crime or desperation. Stay away from those people and those situations. Stay away so that you'll stay safe. and So you won't have to see all those hard things. I think that just may be the same voice that whispered at the disciples when they asked Jesus to send away that hungry multitude. But if we want anything to actually change, Brian Stevenson says, if we actually want to help make things truly, truly better for all people, then those of us who care and those of us who want to obey that foundational commandment to love others like ourselves, we are going to have to get closer to just those sorts of places and people. And only then will we really unleash the power in proximity. And only then will we feel the full force of love. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. Friends, we're going to have to get closer to hurting people if we want to help hurting people. We'll have to get closer to the hungry and the poor. We'll have to get closer to migrants and prisoners. We'll have to get closer to homeless kids and traumatized veterans. If we want to love all of these hurting people and more, all of the vulnerable people in our society, and you see it is the Christian's supreme purpose in life to love hurting and vulnerable people, well then we will have to get closer because only then will the full power of love get unleashed and only then will miracles actually start happening. Now, I know that a pandemic is an awkward time for me to stand here preaching about getting closer to anybody. I get the irony in this sermon. After all, we're not supposed to get within six feet of anybody, right? And here I am preaching a sermon about the power of proximity. But even in such a time as this, when physical distancing is essential to slowing down a raging pandemic, we can still choose to get closer to problems, even if we can't get physically closer to the people facing those problems. We can choose to see the issues that are causing all of the pain in our society and refuse to just jump to our ready-made excuses for why we can't help. 
We can choose to see all of the proverbial multitudes out there in our world whose suffering is huge and hard and daunting. And then we can hear, as Jesus says to us, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Ultimately, my friends, we do not have to have it all figured out. Remember, that's what Brian Stevenson teaches. We don't have to have all of the answers. We don't have to have a perfect plan in place. Because faith is not about understanding how Christ is going to perform the miracle. It's simply trusting that he can. What's most important is that we strive to love and allow that love to do what it does, pulling us closer to each other. Because you see, on the other side of this pandemic, there will be more separation than ever before. We just thought there was a lot of separation and division in our society. There will be more fear. There will be more cynicism. There will be more distrust. There will be more excuses for why we can't and shouldn't help. There will be more hurting and suffering people. And Jesus, he's going to be standing next to them. And he's going to be calling us closer. And he's going to be saying to us, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, Almighty, the Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, and earth of all that is, is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten, begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God begotten, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, we all may, may be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your, your name, name may, be may be glorified by, by all people. people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that, that they, they may, may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your, of your word, word and, and sacraments. sacraments.
strengthen us with your spirit in this time of sickness and separation. That, that we, we may, may be faithful, faithful even, even in, in adversity. adversity. Help our nation repent from all injustice and oppression. That, that all may, may truly experience, experience liberty, liberty and, and justice. justice. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in this and every land. That they, they may lead with, with honesty, honesty and, and integrity. integrity. Be with those who bravely serve to keep others safe. That, that they, they may be strengthened and protected now and always. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That, that our, our works, works may, may find, find favor in, in your sight. sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, that they may, may be, be delivered, delivered from their, their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let, Let light, light perpetual shine, shine upon, upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy May, May we, we also come, come to share in your heavenly, heavenly kingdom. kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Loving God, you have empowered us to share in the miraculous, multiplying ministry of your Son. Send your Holy Spirit to inspire our compassion and offer what we have in service of others. Trusting that Christ has power to transform our gifts into an abundance that can satisfy the needs of the whole world. This we pray through Christ our Savior. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, we that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Peace. God's peace. Peace be with you, Rich.
Well, it's hard to believe that we have come to another month, but indeed we have the first Sunday of the month. And so it is that we give thanks today for all those who are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary this month. I hope you will join us as we pray for all who celebrate this month. Watch, Watch over, over your, your children, children, O Lord, Lord as, as their, their days, days increase. increase. Bless, Bless and guide them, them wherever they may be. Strengthen, strengthen them when, when they stand. stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, nice. That was awesome, you guys. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank, we thank you, you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, especially in this time of sickness and separation, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him, at, at all times and in all, all places, may give thanks, thanks to you in all things. things. Amen. Make your whole life an offering to God, which Christ can take, bless, break, and share. And you will know the miraculous abundance of the kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.